I worked all day. And after I finished with you guys, I'm going to like try to find a Jamaican spot, get me some Jamaican food. I got my uh, absolute and my drink ready. <laughs> And I'm awesome. gonna have a good Friday evening. That's yeah, awesome. I'm not alone. I have beer. <laughs> it, it's only three. It's only three thirty here where I am, so it's a little. Too early. It's, I say go for it. It's not too early. I don't, I don't <laughs> drink. I don't do well with alcohol, so I don't drink. You know, now it's just like I'm on the hot seat. Before it's just like I used to just see y'all in the frame and listen. Now. <laughs> Excited. Now excited. you're in it. You're in it now. So is this just the audio part or this will be on? Because I know you guys have your YouTube too, right? It's vi- so- it's both. It's video okay. and audio. Yeah. Cool beans. I'll act appropriate then. Cool beans. <laughs> well, you don't have to. I don't think we have a rule where it says you have to. <laughs> no. I won't go far. T- I won't go too far left. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we have a no nudity clause. We've never really run into that problem. <laughs> you never have pants on anyway. Though. That's true. <laughs> I, that's why I don't stand up. I have on sweats and I have on my fluffy slippers that I get a lot of compliments on. Oh, wow. Oh, those are nice. Yeah. Wow. I am wearing a dress that covers my ass. It's a sweater dress. So it's like okay. my thigh. Ass covered, check. No. Yeah, that's, that's okay. <laughs> All good. All right. Okay. I think the lighting's good. Okay. Hi. Hola. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Isabel, founder and firebrand of the Uprising Spark. Hi, I'm Kristen, author of The Age of the Child. Hi, I'm Lenora, the creator of The Bitchy Bookkeeper, and we are the three founding non-mothers of Child for Girls. In this episode today, we have Dr. Angela Harris, aka Doc Sarah, who is the founder and creator of No Bibs, Burbs, Bottles, which is a motivational and supportive community for child-free Black women. It includes a podcast, a blog, social media, virtual events, Lots of cool stuff. So welcome to the show, Angela. And Yay! let's let's start off the conversation with you sharing a bit about your, your own journey into the child-free life. So cool. what, what kind of got you started? What, what motivated you? Tell us your story. Yeah. Well, one, I'm so excited to be with you guys. And so I know it's been a long time coming in regards to like, I know, I feel like when I first started, I emailed you guys like, hey, I'm just new. I want to be your friend. I'm entering the child-free space. And all of you guys responded and I've been following you guys and you guys have been supporting me. So I'm so excited to join you guys today. And thank you for getting Doc Sarah, right? Because people just butcher it. And so um, you did a great job. So kudos. Um, So my child free journey, um, it's so hard to kind of pinpoint like exactly when. So what I'll say is um, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, um, I really came into the space of like, you know what, I'm just going to run with this. I'm just going to do this in in regards to letting the world know um, that I don't want kids Um, depending on the day, sometimes I don't like kids. Um, And I really wanted to just one, validate myself while also validating um, other women's experiences. But really how it came to be is that a couple of years ago, I was just like, I wanna be an author. So I've always wanted to write a book and I was just kind of pondering like, what do I wanna write about? And so I've I've been writing poetry since I was a young girl. I've uh, kept a diary like with the locket and the lock and everything since I was a young girl. So I've always been creative. I've always always been a writer. And I was just like, what should I write about? And um, this thing of like, I don't want kids. I wonder if other people feel this way. So it really started with me creating a survey. um, And I wanted to focus on African American because all my research and everything that I've done in school has always been about black folks. And, um, and I wanted to continue on that. And so I created a survey, sent it out to my friends, I sent, sent it out to your friends who don't have children. And I got about 60 surveys back. And from that, it was really the foundation of the book that um, should have been written yesterday, but it's still in progress. So pray for me. It's it's coming. It's coming. If I could just, it's coming. Um, so really, that's kind of where it started. The idea of writing a book about my experience and then wondering, you know, I wonder if other Black women feel this way. And so I just created the survey and then I'm putting all that data in addition to my survey and putting it in a book. And then I said, well, it I started working with a publisher and the publisher encouraged me to start social media to just get my name out there. And that's really how No Bibs, Burps, Bottles, the social media aspect kind of came. So I already had the name, I already um, knew kind of what direction I wanted to go in, but that was more so with the book. And I was not even trying to do social media. That's where Doc Sarah came in. I was just like, I'm trying to be like under the radar. I don't want anyone to know I'm on social media. And my publisher was like, so who's gonna buy your book? 
Who's going to know about you? Who's going to know that you about this child free life? And I was just like, yeah, I guess I should kind of put my big toe in social media. And really that's how uh, No Bibs Burps Bottles got on as far as the online community. And from there, I've just kind of been um, kind of really growing my ideal audience, really partnering with other child free women, with other child free brands, um, and really trying to just carve out a space for me and also while also respecting kind of the umbrella of child free, the child free lifestyle. So I feel like no bibs burps bottles, just like you guys, we're a small piece of the pie and there's room for all of us. I always tell people there's room for all of us, but the child free journey is didn't want kids, wasn't, wasn't comfortable kind of announcing that to the world with the bullhorn until I got older. And then when I came into my own, it was let me bring some other people along this ride. Because if I'm feeling this way, I know other women are feeling this way. So that's really how it started. I'd never, I, I can't, I never wanted children, but you know, you always meet that one person that's like, oh, I can have your kid. And that was like really <laughs> short, short lived. I'm like, you, you cute, but not cute enough to actually like really go through with this baby thing. Um, but just, I've just been more confident in the last maybe, three to five years about expressing myself in regards to, to being child-free and celebrating that, so. And so then, first of all, I, I wanna, can I can I say how old you are? Or can you say how old you are? Cause I think it's amazing. Sure, yes. I so think before, it's so amazing. Before I say how old I am, so I'm doing this every day until March 16th, which is my birthday. Um, on Facebook, I'm doing this every day until March 16th. I'm putting a picture up in celebration of me and I'm inviting my Facebook friends and family to just comment on the pictures. But in a recent post, I said, if God allows you to see whatever age, so for me, it's my age, I'm gonna announce that to the world. And I said, ladies, we should never be hesitant to shout out how old we are. I don't believe in that. Like a woman doesn't tell how old she is. Screw right. that. I will be 50 on March 16th. I'm exact, I'm so happy about that. And if I can, if I see March 16th, the world will know that your girl is turning the big 5-0. I welcome that. I embrace that because I'm not going to subscribe to, oh, you turning 50 and your life is over. No, my life is just beginning. And I've always been, when people ask me my age, I, I never hesitate. I'm mm -hmm. 48. I'm 49. Guess what? March 16th, I'm 50. And I, I'm excited. I'm excited. That's Yay. awesome. It's just, it's just the energy, and you. And I think, Love it. I think a while ago, I, I, you had said your age. Either we we're an event or something together. I can't remember, but I was like, what? <laughs> I, I just, I, you know, I was guessing. I'm like, she's probably because I'm 38. Kristen's, mm -hmm. the, Kristen's the old one in our in child free group. <laughs> but I never would have thought. I'm probably older you know, than all of you guys and a lot of people um are really shocked like to the point where i have to pull out my license and i'm like i get it from my mama and my grandma can't help these genes but i'm gonna i, I take it so when you know people are like you're not you're not turning 50 i'm like yeah i am so and sometimes at first i would say i don't like what does that mean because I, I know i don't act immature mm -hmm. so i wasn't really sure when people say wow i wasn't sure what space that was coming from but for the every time people are just like you just don't look it and then my personality yeah and then I it's college so young people keep me young and yeah it's it's the energy and, energy. and i yeah i bring it up be only because in um you know, in the last couple of years, we, we run into people who are younger in the 20, you know, teens and twenties who say, I have never met somebody who's child free and this age, like over the age of 35. So I'm always, you know, when we, when we, when we find people or talk to people who are, let's say over the age of 45, mm -hmm. I'm like, it's, it's cool just for them to, for younger people to see, cause our audience is generally younger mm -hmm. for them to see like, 50 doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so that's why I want I really I did want to bring up the age just because no I think it's amazing. It's inspiring for me, so I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, I am not I don't need my cane just yet and hopefully I won't <laughs> need it no time soon. So <laughs> All right, we'll go to questions. Isabel, Kristen. It's so good to have you here, Angela, and all the work that you've been doing for the Telford community. Like I've been watching you since the beginning and I'm like this girl's going places. I love it. I absolutely love all that effort that you've been putting. And you're right. We, there's space for everyone in, in the child community, but you're creating a very a specific space, a very special space because you're doing it for black women. 
-hmm. And I wanted to ask you, why, why do you think that was important for you? Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I want to understand that. Yeah, that's a good question, Isabel. Um, so when I initially kind of started exploring the space, honestly, um, I didn't, I felt it was dominated by white women, right? So from my little view, because we can all look through the same window and see something different. So when I was looking for child free, when I was looking, you know, no children, um, the platforms and the mediums and the brands that were out there to me were dominated by white women and I didn't see anything that looked like me. Now, obviously, as I've started to grow a little bit and even do more research, um, there definitely are other platforms. Like, I can't remember her name. She has like, but she, she's like a celebrity. So her platform is like really, really big. Rachel um, Cargo? I, it's Auntie something. Yes. I can't, yeah, so, and, um, so her platform is big. Um, and cause she's a celebrity. So I think she's a celebrity. I'm not sure, but her platform is big. So why it was important for me, I get that question all the time. And it really goes back to, um, that's, that's just been my affinity. That's who I am. So every paper that I've written in grad school, you know, for mental health is mental health in the black woman, mental health in the black man, mental health in the black child. When I was in, doing journalism and got my communications degree, it's, you know, a uh, you know, the African-American community and fill in the blank. And so that's always been my passion of my community um, representing my identity and really child-free and African-American. I just recently wrote a post about this and I, I did it before. People will see my, people will see that I'm black before they know that I am child-free, right? And being this skin tone and having this identity comes with a whole host of positives, negatives, and everything in between. And then when you add and you're child free, you know, so to me, it was just important to say like, yep, I'm melanin popping and I'm child free. And what, what do you have to say about that? Cause I have a lot to say about that. So that's why it was important. It's just who I am, what I represent. And it's just been consistent on kind of what I've always been um, interested in is the black African-American community and really the empowerment. Because if I strike, if I take away child free, there's still something about me and my community that needs to be celebrated. And if I focus on child free, there's still something to say about that and also to be celebrated. So I'm just really matching the two and pulling the two together. I hope that answers the question, but yes. It totally does. <laughs> totally. And it's such a powerful statement, I mm -hmm. think, because you, I mean, I, I understand um, what it was to like coming to the space that the same thing happened to me. You know, you come here and it's like, you have all this, this voices that have been maybe for longer in this space and they're all white. Most of them are white, right? Um, maybe Kimia, do you, have you heard about Kimia and Dennis? Did you guys interview her? Did you guys interview yes. her? Yes, I saw that interview and I know she does a lot of work as well. Yes. Yes, but she's not very active on social media because she gets banned from all the platforms, basically. Aww. Yeah, because she's very outspoken. She doesn't, mm -hmm. she doesn't care. Like she just tells mm -hmm. it as it is. And I think it's, She's done a great job as well, um, but it is very important, I think, to have a lot more uh, visible, like minorities, to have more visibility in this space. You mm -hmm. know, I think it's really important to like bring different voices. So, I'm, I'm really. And a follow up to that, Isabel, is you know, um, there's just a lot happening in the world, like historically, culturally, in regards to African American women, and so I can't. For me, I can't very well just talk about being child free without talking about being a black woman, right? So when I think about some of the things that have happened, you know, you know, Sandra Bland and uh, all, all every every the women, the black women that have been murdered, right? And to my to my knowledge, I believe they were child free. Um, Breonna Taylor, child free. And so I can't just for me, it wouldn't I wouldn't feel good focusing on child free when I'm just like listen, girl, you can't, I can't ignore this, right? I can't ignore this. I can't take this off and be like, focus on me not having any kids. It's like, no, I don't have any children. Don't want any children. Let's celebrate that. I can explain that. I can tell you where that comes from. But let me tell you about this other identity that I can't strike away. And let me tell you about historically, you know, and I haven't even touched this a lot, but just historically, you know, um, Black women slaves didn't have a choice. They, they were, they had to produce, you know, they, they didn't have a choice like, oh, no, master, I don't want to have sex with you. 
No, it's no, I'm going to violate you. And then I'm going to have you breed more kids so that we can have more people to work on this plantation. Like if you think about that, mind blowing. So when I think about myself as a woman who has a choice today of not wanting children, when my ancestors were forced, forced to breed that, that's, I mean, we can talk about that for hours. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that, that triggers something because, um, my dad's family who is black comes from the States and there's very little documentation, but given what I know, I mean, that's in my history too. And it's like, it's jarring for me to think, and it's good. I'm glad you say that because even for myself, as someone who doesn't quite know her, her black background, it's very jarring for me to hear you say that. And, but that's powerful and it's necessary because it, it wakes me up again to realize how privileged I am yeah. to be able to make a choice, whatever color I represent, white or black. Like, it's like, oh my gosh, like this is, the reality is that we have a, a, a choice to make. Um, I had a question to, to you about whether it's your personal experience or with someone that you've interviewed, um, talking about the African-American Black women experience, especially in the States, because it's different up here in Canada. I don't mm -hmm. really know what Black culture is up here, but um, having access to birth control and, and even support within the Black community, where, wherever they are, how, how has it been for either yourself or from people that you've spoke to about be, su the support I'm talking about? Are they supported in their choice not to have kids, whether it's from a healthcare professional or their own social community within the Black community? What's mm -hmm. that been like? So, so I always, when I talk about um, myself and my experiences, I always say, you know, I don't speak for all Black women, but in regards to some of the women that I've interviewed, um, you know, it's always that point where you work with your doctor and your doctor's just like, hey girl, you know, you're 35, you need to start thinking about kids. So when I've interviewed women, it seems like it has come up in the context of that like annual exam. And that even happened to me, you know, is the annual pap smear, you realize like, oh, you're 40 and then your doctor has the talk with you. So I've heard those stories. Um, I've also heard um, from some women that I've interviewed in regards to some of the pressure, you know, auntie and them have kids. So what are you waiting for? Right. Your grandma, my dad is one of 15 children. My grandma that naturally had 15 children. Could I ask my, did she want that? I will never know, right? Because she was young. That's just what women did back then. Um, and she had 15 kids. So I would say that in the African-American community, some women still feel the pressure from their family of, you know, especially if you're not married, you're single and you don't have kids, culturally that can, you can get the side eye, like what's going on, right? And then if you add education, you're an educated, African-American women, you, you know, people, men should be falling downstairs just to try to get to you. But then you realize the research says that the more education an African-American woman has, her chances actually decrease in regards to marriage, right? So I would say not everyone's story is similar to mine or even the women that I've interviewed. But to answer your question, a lot of times it's been that let's have the talk because the doctor has brought it up. And it's in the it's in the kind of the situation of what are you going to do? You have this many years to either freeze your eggs if you want to have kids, or if you don't, then in my case, I was just like, thank you for the conversation, but I'm not paying all this money to freeze my eggs. To be honest, I was grateful that my doctor opened up that conversation because she was and she was an African American, my first African American woman. Um, primary care physician. And she, uh, I think I was maybe 42, I don't remember. Um, but she approached the conversation with me. And to be honest, I was just like, okay, yeah, I guess I need to think about it. But I never really even thought about freezing my eggs and all that to be, because I was just like, that's what rich white women do. I never thought about, I, I know nobody who has gone for in my circle, who has explored like, freezing their eggs or IVF or any of that. I, I personally don't know anyone. So when my doctor had that conversation, to me thinking about that and freezing eggs, I'm just like, that's like a billion trillion dollars to do. And even if I inkly want, and, uh, even if it's a small part of me that wanted children, I already canceled it out because I was just like, I can't afford that process. So so I'm hoping that all of that somewhere answered the question. The question. That, 
That's amazing. Like I, I never, again, never thought about it. The IVF route or freezing eggs. I don't even know if that's part of IVF, but those, I don't even know if those are the same. Cause I don't want to miss, I don't want to, um, use the wrong terms. So, cause I don't really know if IVF and freezing eggs are the same. I just know my doctor was just like, you're at this age. You, if you want to have kids, these are the things that you need to start thinking about. I remember her mentioning freezing eggs and I was just like, thank you for the conversation. You can check that off your box. I'm not going to go this route. But even if I did, all I knew from my perspective is that cost a lot of money. And from what I read online, when I look at the child list community and they're sharing their stories, it seems like the process to have children can be costly. So. And like you said, now that I think about it too, the ones that I see active in those communities are, it's mostly white people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a that's a, such an interesting point I mean you talk about racial disparity and, and things like that I mean that's a whole other issue but when it comes to the child-free community or the, or childless after infertility or whatever community you, you are in I guess women's fertility in general who mm -hmm. is it catering to what social group like what's what I don't even know the right words Isabel help me out here you're more you're better <laughs> versed in this than I am but I'm just saying like when it when it comes to like racial and culturally it it is quite clear, especially here in North America, it seems to be quite clear who it's catering to. Mm -hmm. And it's not I mean, black women from what I can tell. I like, mean, there, there's just a lot of, I mean, and when we think about the medical community and not to like go down the medical rabbit hole, but again, to be, to be able to make the choice of, to, to even be able to vocalize like, hey, I don't want children. Like that takes, that's a journey in itself. There, I personally believe they are black women who just never really thought about it. They just was like, they focus on their career, their education. And I think this thing of like child free is like, what are you guys talking about? I just, I just don't have any kids and they don't. So part of what I want to do is like, that's something just like mothers are like, here's my kid. Like we should, here's not my kid, right? And to be proud of that. But I think there, for some cultures, I think it's just something that is just not thought of. You know, it's like, why is Angela so excited about being child free? I think some black women are just like, yeah, th this was my life, but I didn't really think I needed to be prideful about it or be happy about it or tell other women about it. And it's also about um, educating younger women. You know, like you said, you're following some women are in their 20s and mid 20s. They need to see women like us, all of us. Whether it's me as a black woman, whether it's Isabel, I think Isabel, do you self-identify as a Latina, Latinx? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, so all of us, we have an identity and a background that we bring to the table. So when those younger women who've said at 25, I don't want children, they can see all of us and say, wow, that, that okay, if, they, if they're proud and they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, I can also be confident, bold, at 21 saying, I don't want this for me, so. Were you, did you receive any pressure from your family or, or what, what kind of experience did you have with not having kids? Did people tell you you should have kids? Did they question your, your, your non-child having existence? Yeah, so I, ne I never felt pressure. It was, it was, it was, it was subtle. So again, coming, being a, a product of a father who comes from 15 children, I have a large family. And so it's, you know, thank God my dad didn't follow in his dad's footsteps, right? Um, so no pressure, but it's like, you go home for the holidays. It's like, you still don't have no man. You still don't have no kids. What are you doing? I think what saved me, honestly, not saved me, but um, I've always been very driven in regards to my education. So I think my parents are like, girl, don't have no kids because we know you love school and we know you're gonna do two years here and another two, four years here and another. So I think because my parents saw me as driven and education was important, it was never like, when are you gonna have kids? It was, when are you gonna get married? You know, like you're doing all of this for what? And I'm like, and, and that's a valid question because these degrees don't keep me warm at night, right? So. It's when am I, <laughs> it was, yes, it's great that you have this education and it's great that you're professional and it's great that you've been independent and you're able to take care of yourself. When are you gonna settle down and, and 
have a husband and hopefully with the husband comes the kids. So it was more the, the marriage than the, because, and I came from a very Christian background. So it wasn't like you want to pop out some kids just to pop them out. It's you're going to get married first and then have some kids. That's the right way to do it. So, and I think my parents and other people in my family just thought it would happen organically. And then they like, oh, you about to turn 50 and you still don't have a husband and you still don't have any kids. So now that I've been on this uh, no bibs, burps, bottles journey, uh, my parents are just, it's, it's almost like, yeah, we knew you probably wouldn't have kids just the way, but I think it just took them a while to see that see that because I sat my parents down and you know there's some things that I'm writing about that my parents um, I wanted my parents to know um, in regards to like I just sometimes you know I don't really want to be around kids I have a funny story to share in regards to like I was taking care of my goddaughter and she was an infant and she was breathing I thought she wasn't breathing I don't know baby's got this funny breathing rhythm your girl freaked out I was about to call the police, the fire station. And my girlfriend, was, she was like, she's just like breathing. She's just in a deep sleep. And that just freaked me out. I'm like, see, I can't be a mother because this little thing, this freaked me out. So I think my parents just realized, yeah, we, we probably knew you wasn't going to have kids, but we were crossing our fingers, <laughs> crossing our fingers. So no pressure, pressure, more pressure in regards to marriage, I would say. And that's not happening no time soon. These rings are costume jewelry. So. <laughs> how do you, how does that? Oh, oh, sorry. I was going to ask, do you have any siblings? Yes. I have, oh, wait, sorry. Okay. Good. Um, I have one younger sister. She's one year younger than me. And she has a nephew. Oh, she has a nephew. Really? I like, <laughs> why, why are you on this show if she has a nephew? <laughs> The truth comes out. Okay, we need to vet our guests better, man. <laughs> the truth comes out. I have a nephew. So my, my sister has one son and um, he is 21 now. And, um, and she, you know, she was pregnant. She had twins and they passed away. So that was pretty traumatic, not only for my sister, but for the whole family. So the twins would have been like in their adulthood now. And um, so that, that she took that hard. I took that hard, um, but I have a nephew. Yeah, yep, one, and one sister. That's cool. I was gonna ask you what, how does that, okay. So we're going back to what you're saying about the pressure to be, to get married. You're an educated woman. And if you're getting those comments that you stated, how does that make you feel? How did that make you feel when you're younger? How does that, versus how did that make you feel now? Hmm. When they come at you? If that's the way to describe yeah yeah and it was um my grandfather who you know um is 99 now so god willing he'll be 90 i mean he'll be 100 in june so it was more so when i would visit my grandparents and, and him being the matriarch patriarch of the family just kind of like you know family is everything so i would feel more pressure from him then i would catch an attitude depending on you know when i was coming up 30s early 40s it was just like God, can't you guys be happy about something else? And and don't get me wrong, my family, are, they're very proud of my accomplishments. Um, but again, because we have a, a very Christian foundation, it's, you know, you get married, you have children, and you le lead a good Christian life. So I'm pretty sure I had caught attitudes then. Um, but again, it was a balance because it was always this like, you're not married, but it's like, so how's school? So I think there was this like still excitement about the journey that I was on. Now I don't get it so much, but I understand where now that I'm older, I understand where it comes from. You know, it's just like, even conversations with my dad is just like, we don't want you to be alone. You know, so that whole conversation we've all had, like, you're not married and you don't have any kids. You're just going to be old and alone. Um, I'm not going to lie and say that that has not um, been in the forefront of my mind here and there, especially with COVID, you know, knowing that um, as I get older, I'm by myself, I don't have any children. Um, so I understand it. I understand the, the lines of questioning and where it was coming from now because I'm older. Then I recall having attitudes, trying to blow it off. Be like, auntie, be quiet, you know. So just not really um, paying too much attention to it when I was younger but understanding it now, understanding it now. What do they think about your work with no bibs, burps, bottles? What, mm -hmm. what is, how do they, like, what's the reception to it? 
Yeah. So my mom, she was just like, I want to buy something, but I have kids. So I was just like, well, you can support me still. Give it to give it to one, give it to someone else. Um, my parents are proud of, you know, they've always just everything that I've put my mind to that I've always wanted, it it just with the grace of God, it happens. So they know that I'm driven and they know that I'm on this journey of like just having this grow to what it's supposed to be, right? Um, and so they support me. My mom, every now and then she'll ask, like she asked about, she was like, How is your how was your sex thing? I'm like, what sex thing? Like the, the program that I did. Um, so they, they, they support it. They don't ask too much of it. My sister bought a t-shirt. My sister asked about it. My best friend asked about it. So I get a lot of support. My, I have some aunts who don't have children. So they um, support it by way of just asking me, you know, how, how's they all, it's a tongue twister. So I always say B3, if it, if it's a tongue twister for you, B3 is the, is the short version of it. Um, but they my family is supportive and they ask occasionally about it, but that's about it. That's about it. The sex thing was good, by the way. I went to that. <laughs> For anyone that's like going, what the hell? I, I remember you had this this sex thing. You told us that's right. Chat. Yeah, because I, I did an Instagram live and it was just before I attended your event. And I mentioned it, but I, I totally blanked on the name. So I was like, it's a pleasure party for black women. I don't know, like, you know, really funny. And, and when you're doing lives, right? Like there's no feedback. Like here, at least I could see someone's reaction. But here I'm sitting in my office with my iPhone on Instagram live. And, and a couple of people sent some emojis, but it just totally came out weird. So I had the hardest, the damnedest time trying to think of it. And I was just like, what? So I just was like, oh, and I just thought of Janet Jackson and I, and I named it the pleasure principles. Um, and that was a good event. Just, you know, us coming together, talking about just what pleases us as women. Um, but my parents, everyone, I've not had anyone like my immediate family and friends, like ask, like, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? I think I get more questions from people who follow me or they somehow, uh, find me and I, I get questions more specifically about why black people and not necessarily framed like that, but like an example, I had one person, a Caucasian woman, she was just like, can I be part of this? And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna block people from um, following the content, you know? I, but I always say, you know, be, I want you to be mindful of the content that I put out. And if you appreciate that, if you like that, if you respect that, by all means. So it comes from that um, one or two times, you know, it's kind of, I've had something stupid. I had a, someone who said that they were not a mom enter my Facebook group. Then she wanted to talk to me and then proceeded to tell me that I was mom bashing. And then I had to remind her, him, it, that you um, you lie to get in this group because one of the questions is um, you know you can't have children so here you are being in this group for who knows how long and I, all of a sudden you want to tap me on my coattail and talk to me via DM and say that I'm mom bashing where there's nothing in this group that mom bashes I also followed up with some of my group members but let's go back to the fact that you answered a question that you lied on to get in this group that's what I want to focus on. And so that was kind of a not so good exchange. And of course, you know, the block button is my friend. So, you know, I don't know what this person's goal. And, and I say this person because they were talking about me mom bashing and they had been in the Facebook group for a while. But I don't know if I was talking to a woman, a man, a black person, I, I don't know. And so um, that was kind of difficult because I was just like, and I, it's made me think, am I mom bashing? No. And so when I went to some of the women in the group, they're like, girl, no, this was someone who lied to take that for what it's worth. Someone who lied and answered the question that said, I don't have kids to get in the group and then said, I'm a mom. And I think, so I don't, I don't know what that was about, but yeah, <laughs> don't know what that was about. I think we all get our fair share of trolls and people just leaving comments that sometimes you're like, you're not even showing your face. Like we don't even know who you are and they just kind of like, I mean, it's nonsensical most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, it happens a lot to us on things that have to do with being pro-choice. I was just gonna say, we invited one of those people on our show. <laughs> Did they yeah. come on? Did they come on? Oh, he came on. Oh, he came on. Oh. 
did you that episode the christian anti-abortionist no that's okay. the, you have to watch it with two bottles of wine possibly <laughs> before you start watching this you have exactly. to two bottles of wine wow <laughs> Good yeah. for you guys for inviting inviting that person on to share their views. Yeah, I know we all get our fair share of, you know, I've I that's what I've been kind of I don't want to say waiting for, but I've been waiting not waiting for. I'm surprised that I haven't had that like, why you got to do this for black folk like that type of energy. I haven't gotten it to the like tenth power. But again, you know, when people just like, oh, can I join this or can I follow? And I'm just like, it's free. Like, I'm not charging people to follow me on Instagram. But as, if you follow, don't come for me saying like, well, why don't you do this? And why, don't focus on Black women. Like, once you give me that energy, then you need to be some wealth. So I welcome people who respect the content that I put out there and respect the identity that I hold and carry um, being an African-American woman, as well as a child-free woman. So I think it's good. I find you quite approachable, um, because my own personal issue being biracial, I have always been very self-conscious about having a conversation about black issues with other black women, because I feel a lot of times lesser than, mm -hmm. and so you were one of the people during last year, 2020, when they had the black lives matter movement, when it was coming to a peak, and everyone was being called out for not saying something. And I was called out for not saying something. And I was like, what do I do? You're one of the few people that I, st I could felt like I could reach out to, to at least start a conversation. Cause I felt very insecure about my either lack of black identity <laughs> or mm -hmm. understanding. So I do find you, you and your brand quite approachable, which I think is important because if it invites Caucasian women specifically or white people in general or non-black people however they want to identify to have that conversation that is so important because I think and speaking from personal experience when you don't know what to say what to ask and especially living in a time where we don't know how to identify people we had that conversation in our chat earlier today we're like you know what's the correct terms and, and you want to talk about something but you just feel inadequate it's nice to see someone like yourself who is making the conversation approachable that it's friendly and i also think that's probably why you you don't get a lot of pushback it's because it's not coming from an angry place and mm -hmm. i personally believe that that makes a difference like if we were putting out angry child free content i think we would get a lot of angry you know <laughs> yeah yeah. Back. And sometimes there are just people that no matter how nice you are, they, they exactly. say stupid things and anyway. I, yeah, and Lenore, and I don't want to be naive to say that it will never come for, come to me. I've, I've been thankful that it hasn't, you know, and, and people are curious. I think people are curious about all the platforms that are talking about child-free because I think there's been this emergence of like, where's all, you know, I, I laugh and I say like, this is nothing new. Like, I mean, to get here, we came from women Right. So, but there are also women in history that just didn't have children. I think now we are all expressing ourselves and it's coming to the forefront where we're just like, you know what? If uh, moms can have 80 million, thousand trillion, 42 million, 862 groups, then we should have it too. <laughs> That's it. I think they have more than that. <laughs> yes, I think so too. You know, and so it's just being amplified. And when something is amplified and, and women are like, yes, that's me. I see myself in all these women. People are like, what the hell is going on with this child free thing? And so, um, but I'm not naive to think that it will never happen, you know, at some point. I also don't say that I know everything just because I'm a black woman. Um, does, I don't know everything. Sometimes I get it wrong. But one of the things I want to say to you, Lenora, is I actually... Re I, I thought your episode, I don't know if it was a, a live you did or I can't remember, but you talked about being biracial and you were like coming into your own. And I thought that was so dope because um, I actually did a um, research on a biracial um, student group when I was in school. And just to hear their challenges and their concerns, as well as, you know, one foot in the black community, one foot in the white community. And, you know, and I was with them for 12 weeks meeting with them just collecting data wow so i really enjoyed your piece of you expressing kind of how you grew up and even being in toronto like it's a yeah, big uh, alberta the other oh. other direction 
<laughs> the other direction out west <laughs> sorry it's okay um, so you, see, you know say like what does black identity mean to you where you are in Canada is very different in the U.S. so and I think what you shared more people need to hear you know so Thanks. Yeah, I know it was it was uncomfortable. I didn't even wear a wig for that because I wanted to showcase like you can be a black person and not have the hair, you know, and if you got if anyone has no idea what I'm talking about, I wear wigs. But if you go to like the beginning of Child Free Girls, that's my natural hair, which is very fine and straight. And, I, you know, I just, it's not what people would expect to see a black person or and I've learned how to that that that's someone else's perception. And that was my perception of what a black person should look like. So you know, to have like talking about even just being child free, I think to segue to the child free topic, I think it's really important that people share their child free story, regardless of color, whatever you yes. you, you feel, because we all have a different story. And, and, you know, we all know the stereotypes of, oh, child free people get lots of sleep. We've got tons of cash. We travel all over the place. And some people do and some people don't. But the thing is, is that if everybody or that we hate kids, right? So to that point that if we all share our story, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be flashy story. It can just, it's just our stories that we share. Then that <laughs> takes away a lot of myths and, and misconceptions and, and invites a dialogue from parents, which we all think is important. Like the three mm -hmm. of us think it's important to have those conversations mm -hmm. because they can teach their children, mm -hmm. you know, if they decide to. So I, I just, I always think it's I mean it's uncomfortable <laughs> it's probably easier for you now how is it as you get the more you podcast the more you do events the more you talk about being child free mm -hmm. I, mean, I imagine it's getting more comfortable for you where it's just like I'm here. I would say I would agree with that um when I first started in the kind of online community space um I like I said I wasn't really I wasn't sure where this was gonna go like my publisher was just like you need to have an online presence and I was just like, why? Like, why? And I realized in the in the day and age that we live in, when you are trying to get something of value out there, it's important. Um, that's just what people are going to Google and on their phone, right? Um, okay, Kristen, do you have anything you want to ask, say, whatever, and we can edit kind of starting from your thought? Well, I did have one quick question, actually. And that was, um, you said that when you were going online, Angela, that a lot of the child-free communities you were seeing were a bunch of white women. Um, it, like it was just very white dominated. And I just wondered if there was um, like the difference in the kind of content that you were seeing there as opposed to the kind of child-free content, like either in approach to being child-free or the child-free experiences or anything, if you, if you saw any kind of notable differences um, as, aside from the obvious, I guess. Mm -hmm. So Krista, I, I want to make sure I'm understanding your question. So you're asking me when I was looking, when I, the child-free communities that I saw, was it anything that stood out in regards to the content and what they were putting out in regards? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like, okay, well, this, I don't relate to this. This is not, this is not the community uh, that feels right to me. Okay. Yeah. So I think there's two things that I saw. I saw what I deemed as positive content in regards to being child-free, um, educating people about what that means, um, showing that child-free uh, pride. And then the other half was um, all kids are, should go to hell and stop producing. That's just not my lane. I tell people um, that's just not something I agree with. Like I, if my mom, my grandmother had 15 kids, like I wouldn't want no one telling her like, stop, you know, to each his own. So I don't necessarily, for me and my spirit and my energy, um, I tend to steer away from the platforms that are like, you know, stop having children in the planet. That's just not my jam. I like, I'm not an environmentalist. I'm not, you know, like save the planet. That's just not my lane. Um, but my lane is, um, you know, if you choose not to have children, be proud about that. Don't let anyone pressure you. So I think when I was, when I was looking, um, I saw both platforms that were positive and platforms that were not so positive. And it was just hard to kind of find where I fit in. And then I think just visibly, like when you're just going down a, a timeline, um, and, and I don't say this because somebody can just look at my and be like, why she got all those black people? Someone can look at this and be why she got all these blonde people? Why do and that's the beauty of having your own lane. It you create your own lane. 
-hmm. So it wasn't that, um, it wasn't that the content that I was seeing that was dominated by white women was all bad. It's just that I didn't see me. Oh and yeah. I didn't think that's what you were saying. Just so. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I, just, I was just thinking in terms of, you know, relatability really. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah. So I would say the, the I could relate to the, the content that that was out there that was more positive, that was more affirming, more empowering. And then the content that had, and again, I'm not knocking, the, that's their lane. For me, I, I stay away, it, it wasn't appealing, it wasn't drawing me in the platforms that talk about, um, you know, don't have this many kids because we have the plan is overpopulated, you know, that's just not my lane. You know, it's I'm not sure if I answered about... the question, Kristen. Sorry? I'm not sure if I answered your question. No, you but what... oh, okay, okay. I thought it was interesting earlier too when you were saying that you, the, the things you do, the things you study is this subject in a black community, this subject, black women, this subject, black women. And it's um, it's funny in a not funny way that it mm -hmm. needs to be um, approached in that way because historically it's just kind of like white people assumed mm -hmm. white as the default. So if they were studying something, it wasn't something and white people or something mm -hmm. else in white people. It was just, I'm studying this and obviously it's white people. I mean, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's, that was, that just struck me as tragic. <laughs> and the thing is, is that, you know, for me, it's important to, when I'm focusing on, when Bibs, no Bibs Burks bottles, um, when we are focusing on, um, you know, using your voice and empowering African American to be child free and to not um, feel pressure, what goes along with that is also that, that um, in, being empowered to just be authentically you, right? So that that pride of being African American and understanding from which we came. For me, I can't disconnect the, the two. Like, yeah, I can just talk about being child free, and yeah, I can just talk about being black. But for me, it's like I I actually like I want to be able to talk about both of them, you know, because that's what I represent. So it, it's it's just me trying to stay true to who I am, yeah, and really just allowing other people. So. If someone who comes behind me is just like child free African American, like maybe me and other people, because I, I always say I'm not the only one doing this, right? Um, people come to all of us because they see something in our delivery of information and in our personalities and in our platforms that they enjoy. Um, but you know, there's there's other child free women outside of the four of us, right? So I just always want people to be like, oh, there's someone that looks like me, or there's someone that has the same experience, or there's someone that understands, you know, and they will, I believe that they can get that from all, because I know you guys, I believe that they can get that from your platform, my platform, depending on what they're looking for, because we all come from a place of affirming, empowering, and letting people know that there's nothing wrong with the life that we live. Wow, I think that is like a brilliant way to end. That is so awesome. Thank you, Angela, so much. We've loved having your energy here. This has been spectacular. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm excited. <laughs> we should just let her do our wrap up. <laughs> we could have sent you the notes and do everything. So we'll we'll do the wrap up now. Well, that is all for today's episode. Thank you everyone for watching, for listening. Be sure to leave your comments below if you are watching this on YouTube. And while you're at it, please hit the subscribe button. And if you are listening to this on the podcast, head over to YouTube and hit subscribe just because it helps out. And you can just see all of our awesome hairdos. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but you know, there's visual things to look at too. Um, if you have any comments, questions, either for Angela, you can email us and we'll pass that on to her. Or actually, let me rewind that. Angela, how can people reach out to you? Plug your email. <laughs> what's the best email to contact you at if you want to be contacted? And yes, what's your social I'll, media? I would love to be contacted if people are interested. So people can find me, obviously, um, on Instagram at no bibs, burps, bottles. Um, if people would like to email me, they can email me at no bibs, burps, bottles at gmail.com. Or you can go or end, you can go to the website um, www.nobibsburpsbottles.com. And you're also a podcast too. They can find you on various yeah, podcasts, so the, right? The blog and the podcast um, is on our website. You can find links to the blog and the podcast also on our Instagram. 
Excellent. And if anyone has any questions for us or for the show, comments, suggestions, you can email us at childforgirls at gmail.com and our website is childforgirls.com. And childfreegirls.com. I'm so excited to be with you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Okay, Kristen, your turn. Yeah, I know. We are also, if you, once you're done with the podcast and or YouTube and checking out No Bibs Burps Bottles, um, you can also find Child Free Girls on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We are now on Clubhouse and we are there every Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern discussing all things child free. Um, you can find us on Amazon under the title Child Free Girls Comfort Food for Thought. That's a little book we made for you. It's Kindle and paperback, so whatever you want. And our website is childfreegirls.com, which I think Lenora already said, but I just wanted to repeat it so you wouldn't forget. <laughs> Repetition is good. It's good. <laughs> Would you like to Ooh. ask our audience a question, Angela? Yeah, we, we always end with a question for our audience. So is there something that you would like to pose to our audience as in a form of a question? <laughs> <laughs> that was as bad as the last thing I did the last what was the last thing at last oh my god I'm so whatever you say just uptone it'll work <laughs> this, this is a question that I asked um my podcast podcast guest so I would ask this what would you say to a 20 21 year old woman who is con- who has confirmed for herself that she does not want kids but is getting pressure because she's too young to make that type of decision how would you empower her what would you tell her um, as she was feeling or experiencing that type of pressure because I think people we cancel that out you know you're you're young you you don't know how you'll feel when you're 25 or 30 and I do think there are a lot of young women who um, have decided for themselves that they w- don't want kids but people ride them off because they're too young so what would you say if a young woman in her 20s came to you how would you empower her that's a great question. That's a fabulous can, question. Yes, you can leave us your answers to that question below in the comments, or you can send us an email to the email that Lenora already said, childfreegirls.gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. And you know what really works for us? Reviews. Yes. yes. Rate and review our podcast. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> No, you say bye. No, you say bye. (laughs) Oh my God, I'm leaving. (laughs) You leave first. I'm going. Bye. Bye. (laughs)